I mean, honestly, it might be different for different people. I mean, some people go for the likes and the, I mean, for me, it's kind of just a, became a part of my life and, you know, just a pastime. Like, if I'm not doing anything, I might as well scroll on Facebook, see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a, uh, another world within itself, or if you want to say it's this world, but, you know, every, you know, everybody can meet up without actually meeting up in person. So it makes it a situation where you don't, if you're at home and you're bored, you can literally just get on social media and you're not bored anymore as we're back in the day, there was none of that. So you had to go find something to do. And so, you know, I think that's where it comes in at is that, you know, a kind of, you know, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it kind of kills your ambition to do anything else, you know, because I mean, if you're at work most of the time, at school or, you know, wherever you, you know, if you're younger or older, wherever you're spending most of your time at and then, you know, the rest of the time you have other, you know, uh, obligations, maybe you're in sports for kids or you have kids, you know, being an adult and you have other things to do and in between that time after that, you're on social media, you kind of don't have any time left, you know, to kind of do anything. So how can you further yourself if all of your in-between time is taken up by social media, you know? It definitely puts information out there a lot quicker and I think that also can be, like you said, a positive, but it can also be a negative because then if everything is just readily available at your hand, it's just kind of, I mean, it kind of makes you lazy, you know, because it's easily attainable and everything is just so quick and fast. And then also um, social media within itself has kind of taken on its own thing. So, I mean, a lot of information on social media isn't necessarily true. I mean, you know, so it kind of hinders people when they're only on social media getting their information like you know and a lot of teenagers and you know college age kids and stuff they're mainly on social media and you know these are the people who are coming into the future and becoming voters and becoming productive members of society so i think that that kind of affects a lot you know a lot of phones come downloaded with come pre-downloaded with facebook like you know or you know or twitter or you know and so yeah that's where it's kind of it's just integrated into our lives and it goes even deeper because I mean, as like I said, I was watching the documentary and stuff, everybody can watch it on Netflix it's called The Social Dilemma, really, really informative. Um, they go into how they basically like the, just the, all the data they can collect on people from social media, just the, the, the countless, endless amounts of data that they can collect on you. And um, usually what ends up happening with that data is that they, it, it's used for advertising. That's how these companies make their money. Facebook is free to download, but their advertising is what makes their money. So that's the thing is that they've turned us into a commodity. We are what Facebook is selling. You know, they're selling us and our data. And so the more stuff they can get about us and the more things they know about us, the more catered they can put us towards these particular companies that are trying to promote to us and advertise to us. Yeah, no, it's just, yeah, it's a little, with that, it's a little deeper because they're using, I mean, they could possibly use it for, I mean, a little bit more detrimental things, but to me, it's similar. I mean, our government can do the same thing to us as a people. So, I mean, I don't necessarily think that, you know, just, I mean, it's people kind of think that our government always has our best interests at heart, and I don't think that's necessarily true. So, I mean, whether it's China that has our information or the government, uh, our government doesn't really make any never mind to me because it's very similar. That's where, that's where my, whole argument comes with the social media thing it's the fact that like that's what happened with the the Russia thing they can you know they were talking about they make these fake Facebook profiles and they promote certain things on one side versus another side and cause arguments and so that's what I mean by a lot of the stuff is not true and it is very divisive so if it's used correctly of course which most of the time it's not um, because like uh, that conversation we had before I personally think that by human nature, humans naturally do bad stuff until they have order and are told to do good. Like, you know, because that's why we have those kind of things that happen because you have to have regulations on people because the majority of people aren't even using, using the information that's put out there correctly. Like, you know, the fact that we have instant information is not now being used to help us. It's now being used to put us against each other. Well, I 100% believe that. I've definitely fixed my car off YouTube. I found food recipes on YouTube, Facebook, you know, so you're right. So there are positive things that are being done with social media. I'm not just saying that all social media is bad. I mean, I think where it gets bad is when it's in the hands of children. I think that children is where it kind of, um, where the, the problem is because children uh, are not really developed emotionally. You know, they're, you know, the frontal lobe, their decision making, all those things aren't fully developed yet. And so they kind of put themselves in a hole in life before they can even 
get out and then social media becomes a form of bullying and other things like that for children and you can't escape it. I couldn't imagine in sixth, seventh, eighth grade if I, you know, I had to go home and then get on social media and everybody's, you know, uh, talking and saying, you know, things they might have said at school or, you know, like it, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of messed up, like, you know, so it's, it, it, it can be overwhelming for children and they don't know how to, they, they kind of may not feel, uh, may feel that they don't have an escape and, you know, since social media has, uh, uh, platforms have came out, uh, suicides in teens and preteens have went up uh, hundreds, you know, like hundreds of percent. Like, I, I don't want to give an exact number, but they, uh, it's went up quite a bit. Um, I want to say like 112 percent in, uh, in uh, teenagers and like 142 percent in preteen girls. Girls mainly is who it really affects, you know, and so uh, that's where the problem comes in is parents letting their kids have social media in uh, fifth grade and sixth grade and through middle school and things like that. Um, you know, I can understand, you know, maybe when you get to, you know, high school, you know, sophomore, junior, something like that. But I don't know, like middle school, elementary kids, I don't think should have social media. It's dangerous. Not even just that, Mac. I'm sorry to cut you off, but on Instagram, people, a lot of people don't know that if you don't turn off your location, your kids at school just taking pictures with their friends. If the location's not off, it automatically has a location on that picture and somebody can go in and click exactly where that picture was taken. Now they know where your kids went to school at. You know, it's extremely dangerous and you know, uh, and even a lot of some parents don't really know very much about it. So they're, you know, and so it, it becomes extremely dangerous for children. You know, I think it can be used responsibly with adults. I mean, even adults are, you know, messed up too, but I definitely think in ch with children is the, is the huge, huge issue. I feel like that's good. I mean, people meeting online, I don't think that that's necessarily good. I think you should have to, it, 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 you should really meet somebody in person organically and really talk to someone and get to know them and not online on social media I think that's another dangerous thing and that's why a lot of relationships don't work out because people see somebody online and they think they're that person they meet up and they end up in a relationship and it's like oh my god you're not that person yeah well yeah that now that was different now just meeting somebody who's kind of just not you know not the person you thought they were is different because catfishing is literally somebody like you said who has a totally different profile picture and they're literally not that person at all and they're tricky you into thinking of that person doesn't want to video chat you doesn't want to do those things because you'll find out that they're not the real person and that's a more of a catfishing and you're that's where you went into the lonely people get really lonely at home and you know and it, it, you know people lose a lot of self-worth and you know and I, I'm just sorry I feel like social interaction is very big among humans I mean it's kind of I, I believe they've done studies on people about, about how it can really people without human contact would die faster and you know, human contact is very big, and the way that we're going, there'll be no human contact. They want you to do everything from inside your home, talk to you, you're doing, they got school inside of homes, you video games, like everything you do, you can do for, you can order groceries to your house, order food to your house, like there's almost nothing you need to leave your house for these days, like, you know, except to go to work. And even a lot of people are working from home now, so it's like, yeah, it's it's very scary to think of the, the all this non-human interaction that's going on. It's it's not good at all. Get your kids off social media, use it responsibly as an adult, and don't let it pitch you against each other because we are all together in this and there's a such thing as the 99% and the 1% and the 1% has been having us go against each other for a very, very, very long time. Um, it's very scary, so everybody needs to uh, come together so we can uh, kind of divide, build this, uh, uh, bridge this wealth gap, you know, that's been going on because that's one of the biggest things. and. Uh, Climate control, people. Our planet is the most important thing. I mean, what else can I say?